Hey everybody, so today I'm gonna to talk about the Polaroid i2 camera and the different shooting modes that this camera has programmed in. What's nice is that all of these modes can be fully controlled from the camera itself. There is the ability to Bluetooth the camera, but that's really only if you wanna use it from a remote standpoint. Everything can be controlled on the camera itself. I, as a professional photographer, really appreciate that. Um, when you look at the camera, there are three buttons on the back by the LCD. The top button is a toggle button that allows you to change between the different modes. The middle big round button is your power button. And the bottom button is the flash button. It turns the flash on and off. So when I press and hold the power button for a second, it comes up and I have it set right now to auto mode. And you see it says lens cap because the lens cap's on. Remind you, it's a nice reminder. Pull the lens cap off. And in auto mode, the camera does everything for you. The camera will choose what it feels is the best shutter speed and the best f-stop combination to give you a successful exposure of what's in front of the lens. Now, I almost never use auto mode. I would only use this mode if I was handing this camera to my mom and wanted to have a successful photograph, or if I was, say, new to photography and I just wanted someone to go out and I, and I wanted them to have the creative experience of working with Polaroid, this is a way to get people photographing without having to get into the specifics too much. So auto mode really is exactly what it says. Camera does everything for you. If I press the line button, it scrolls to the next mode, which is aperture priority. I love aperture priority. I probably use aperture priority for 90% of my working style on a camera like this. Aperture priority allows you to change the f-stop from f8 all the way out to f64. f8 on this camera is gonna be a pretty shallow depth of field, and that would be ideal for something like a head and shoulder portrait shot. Whereas something like f45 or f64, it's a very small opening, and it's gonna give you an enhanced sense of depth of field and a greater sense of sharpness. So it's good for something like a landscape. But it also might be necessary on a bright sunny day on a beach in order to balance uh, the range of shutter speeds capable in this camera. And you control the f-stop, by this ring right here. So you can see on the dial there, it's going from, uh, let me see, here we were at F8, now it's going to 11, 16, 22, 32, 45, 64. Um, and as you can see, as I change the f-stop, the camera is changing the shutter speed so I get a proper exposure. Um, aperture priority, as I said, is one of my favorite. And another thing that I love, when you're in aperture priority, Right here on the top of the camera is an exposure compensation dial. It goes plus and minus two stops, and it's in third of a stop increments. So I could say, okay, I want to work at F11, but I want to go a slight tweak on the exposure. I'm hoping if you can see this here. A slight, you see how the shutter speed is going into uh, fractional differences? It allows me to tweak the exposure. So if I know, let's say for instance, I want to do a portrait at F8. So, okay, so I dial it into, let me see here, F8. And then let's say the person is slightly backlit. I'm smart enough from photographic experience that I know I need to overexpose that scene by a stop and a third. So I can dial in that stop and a third and I get a perfect shot. Let's say someone is in a window light, side window light like I am right here. I know that I need to overexpose by a stop in order to have the proper exposure. So having the ability of controlling your f-stop for your depth of field is amazing. But then having the ability of using the exposure compensation dial in plus or minus two stops in one third of a stop increments is amazing. Absolutely changes your working with Polaroid material. And one of the reasons why this is so important to have this degree of control is that Polaroid material has a narrow exposure latitude. It doesn't have a whole lot of forgiveness in terms of under and over exposing. Doing a third or two thirds of a stop adjustment where there's a bright area in a frame or a dark area might be too much. It might push that area too bright or too dark. So having this level of finesse when you're working on something like aperture priority is absolutely amazing. Um, the next mode, if we hold the button in, goes to shutter priority mode. Now, I am not a huge shutter priority mode fan. I just don't think that way, but it's the exact opposite of working with aperture priority. Shutter priority allows you to say, I want the exposure to be uh, a 1 25th of a second. And the camera will then choose the appropriate f-stop to have that relationship work. 
and let's say you're choosing that uh, shutter speed because you want to freeze the action in a frame. There's someone on a skateboard or someone riding a bike. That's why you would choose that. Or let's say you're photographing like a waterfall and you want to have that sense of that blur of the water and you know it's going to take at least a second or two second exposure to get that proper blur. I can go in on the shutter speed dial and set that setting and the camera will choose the f-stop if possible to make that exposure perfect. So shutter speed is really just the exact opposite of f-stop. One's, one's controlling the opening of the lens, the other is controlling the duration that the lens is open. The next setting that we have is manual exposure. Manual exposure is exactly what it sounds like. You've got an external handheld light meter, whether it's an actual device, whether it's your iPhone light meter, and you're metering the scene using reflected incident light, spot meter, all different methods, and you're putting that information into the phone. An awful lot of the people who reviewed this camera that I've been watching on YouTube talk about using manual exposure a lot. Manual exposure definitely will let you dial in a very precise, properly exposed Polaroid where you can really in your mind and through the meter be taking into account the latitude of the material. However, in my experience, it's not that necessary. And I'll get into this in, in future videos on tips and tricks on how to sort of work in the different modes based upon what you're shooting. And with just a little bit of knowledge, you don't really need it. The meter in here is actually quite good for 99% of what you're gonna shoot. Okay, if we scroll through one more mode, hold on here, I'll press it down, we get to multiple exposure mode. Now, this is super cool. The camera has the ability, you can use the, uh, uh, let me hold on a second, I pressed the wrong button. When you're in multiple exposure mode, you have the ability of doing, uh, you can see right here, I'll show you, using the dial here on the lens, that's doing two exposures, that's doing three exposures, four exposures, and four is the most that you can do. So it, it'll give you the ability of doing two, three, or four multiple exposures all on the same piece of film. What it does is it's underexposing. If you say you have two shots, it's underexposing the film by about a stop or two, and then the two shots together create enough of an exposure to have a properly exposed Polaroid, and you have two different overlapping images. So let's say you take a picture of your girlfriend or boyfriend, and then you take a picture of some mountains in the background. I'm sure you've all seen this on the internet before. Those two images overlap and become one image. What's cool is it's all done in the camera, and that's really great. And the fact that the camera is you know, set up in a way that you can do two, three, and four is really creative. In a future post coming up very soon, I'm gonna show you how you can hack the multiple exposure to do something with this camera that Polaroid doesn't even realize you can do that is a huge advantage with working with instant material. Stay tuned for that, maybe in a day or two I'll get into that one. Um, and then the next mode is timer. Timer mode uh, is really great because the camera doesn't have a cable release setting anywhere on here, you use the timer mode to do like a delay time. So let's say you wanna take a group picture, you wanna run in the frame, you can do that. Once again, you use your dial right here and you can set the amount of time that you want. And I believe if I remember correctly, yeah, it goes from three seconds to six seconds to nine seconds to 12 seconds. That's great. You can also use the timer as like a cable release. So I could set the timer to three seconds, put this on a tripod, press the button, let my hand go so there's no vibration of the camera for me pressing the button, and then it'll take a great, nice, sharp shot, especially for like a long exposure. So the timer mode is really helpful. And after that, it goes right back to auto. The only other setting on the buttons that you have here is the flash button, which turns the flash on, and when it's fully charged, it stops flashing, I believe. Let's see here. Yes, flash is now ready, and when I'm done with it, I can just turn it off. The flash is really small on this camera. I'm still sort of wrapping my mind around how I would want to use flash in this camera. Fill flash is really great for opening up shadows, but because the flash is so small, sometimes it can have a tendency of feeling a little too harsh. So I hope that explains the camera and basics. If you're new to photography and you get this camera, just put it on auto and go shoot a pack. My suggestion then would be, aperture priority, maybe play with some of the multiple exposures. But the most important thing, and I always tell people this, is the reason you got into photography, it's fun. That's the reason you got into photography. So when you pick this camera up, go have some fun with it. Thank you very much for listening. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Now go shoot some film.